Joining me now is Dr. Roderick A. Slavchev out of the University of Waterloo, and you become a bit of an overnight sensation, at least in regards to national media, because of what you're embarking on. You're trying to find a vaccine for the coronavirus, uh, COVID-19. How did you embark on this initially? Well, this was a, it's a U, University of Waterloo endeavor, and it's uh, with a few colleagues of mine, we essentially sat down and figured out that when, if we were to collaborate and bring our, our various expertise to the table, there's a real possibility in the designing of something that we believe that can be an expedited solution and we could get to into the hands of patients uh, to address the COVID-19 problem and even potentially uh, future epidemics that might arise from coronaviruses. What are the first steps? How do you begin this, this research into this, this virus, which has you know, caused so much heartache really around the world? Well, I mean, <laughs> I guess what, what happens is you realize that if the capabilities are present and uh, we have some the abilities to do something about it, well, then you, you meet up with the right people and you just decide to, to go for it. And uh, you, you have a passionate crew like I do. I have a great team, as do the colleagues that I'm working with, Drs. Uh, O'Coin and Ho, and everyone was on board. And it happened essentially overnight. We just uh, sat down, got this thing designed, figured out exactly what the best approach was to go about doing it. And we're already up and running, getting this going. You know, we got the labs open, already very active as best as possible, obviously taking into account all the safety measures that have to be in place. And we're off to the races. And you know, it's, it's driven by passion and need, and that's how it should be. We're just rising to the urgency of the situation. How does one develop a vaccine? What kind of studies do you embark on? What kind of things are you looking at? What kind of models are you looking at to try to counteract what COVID-19 does to people? Well, I have a, a bit of a background experience on, on vaccine development, and a lot of my background is in genetics and microbiology. So it's, uh, it's a little bit of an area that's familiar to me. Um, and you, you know what's out there, and we have a good sense of what the available uh, scenarios are and we just lend to what are the internal capabilities of what we believe that we can do best and how we can design something that draws on a lot of the literature and what's been done and figures out how can we novelly do something that we believe is better, more durable, and more universal across the board. Dr. Slavchev, you're working with two other doctors. Are they also uh, from the University of Waterloo? Is that your team? Yes, that's right. That's uh, Dr. Emmanuel Ho and Dr. Mark O'Coin. So one is a chemical engineer, uh, that's Dr. O'Coin, and the other is a formulation specialist uh, in chemistry, as well as in a lot of different areas in uh, pharmaceutics and pharmacy applications, uh, as well as bioengineering. So we've got a, a really cool and uh, cross-disciplinary team to be able to tackle this from a number of different perspectives, which makes it not only exciting, but highly rewarding as well. You're not the only group trying to develop a vaccine, as you're well aware. Um, are you in any contact with any other scientists in other cities or other countries who are embarking on this? Um, yes, I mean, th there's a lot of contact and a lot of this happens just by virtue of literature and a lot of sort of you know pieces that go out, learning from others. Um, anytime, and this is what's really cool and what I, I'm really thrilled about seeing in Canada. I, it's not a matter of you know a race of who gets to it first. It's a matter of getting this done and finding a solution as fast as possible and seeing all the other investigators across the country rising up and taking action against this. That's the way it should be, and it's you know it's it's a cool thing to see. It's the way it's it's a great thing to see. So yes, this is a collaborative effort nationally. Is the way I see it. There uh, has been some progress. You're getting some uh, good early results. How are you getting those results? The positive ones. Um, well, this is all based on a platform that we had uh, derived. I have two different companies that have spun out of my lab based on some of our previous research. We're DNA specialists. So Metaphage Biosuticals is one of those companies that has a, a new approach and a new vector that can be a very safe and effective way of being able to deliver DNA. So we drew on, on what those capabilities were, as well as a new delivery vector that is highly novel using a bacteriophage through another company, Theraphage. Um, and putting those together, it just made a, a significant platform that we believe can just draw on all the necessary immunological pieces to, to do something not only different, but more effective than what has been done previously. Dr. Slavtip, there's also been a lot of, I guess, concern, worry about timeframes, development timeframes. Some people say it takes years to develop a vaccine. Some say it could take as little as a year. Can you put a clock on it or is that too difficult? 
It is difficult. I mean, everything's really based on the necessary testing. Um, to alleviate some of those fears, I think the best way to look at it is that you know, a lot of the regulatory hurdles that are in place, although expedited at present to be able to get something into the hands of people who need it, they're necessary. And having these safety measures in place is, is a very important part to make sure that no matter what is developed and by whom, that it is appropriately tested in all the various and, and right areas to ensure that it is a safe vaccine for any, any further usage. So that does add time, of course, but it is it is important. Do animals get tested first and then humans? How do you progress? Uh, unfortunately, yes. I mean, animals are a necessary part of the equation and we do have to move into uh, into preclinical trials and that's part of it. I mean, we assume that we'll be completed all of that by April 2021. Uh, that's the sort of expedited clock and we have all hands on deck, commercial and uh, academic at, at this point, everyone worked toward the same end after that there is a sort of expedited clinical approach. And that's why we also have engaged some of our commercial partners to try to move that forward as fast as possible. And let's discuss how you want to apply said vaccine to those people that want to, uh, you know, prevent getting this or maybe get cured of it. Um, if you're talking about the administration approach, I mean, one of the things that we're really happy about here is that we're looking at a non-invasive approach, which serves really three very important angles. One, it's the best way to get the vaccine to the necessary cells that are affected by SARS-CoV-2 um, on the respiratory tract uh, through the nasal, uh, nasal tissue. Uh, secondly, it's non-invasive, which is definitely a plus. And the third is that there's very important uh, immune tissue within the nasal uh, cavity, which lends itself towards a very potent and important uh, immune response toward the end of a viral vaccine such as this. So we're talking about a spray. Yes. yes. A lot of people talked about, I've been reading a little bit about this today and, and in the past, about having your study peer reviewed. I'm assuming that means other physicians, other professors, doctors are going to examine or do their own testing. Um, peer review is a, just a really important part of everything that we do in academia. We have to make sure that, and, and if you look at it, especially for, a, for an urgency, particularly like COVID-19, it's not just a matter of saying it's an okay approach. It's also adding additional benefits so that you get the best expertise from all those who are looking at it to ensure that everything that we do is not only okay to pursue forward, but also to ensure that we are doing it in the best and most cost-effective way. Do you feel any added pressure given uh, to develop this, given what's going on in the world, what's going on in Canada right now and, and, the, and the entire globe? Yes, absolutely. I mean, there's enormous pressure. As a team, we're working you know, very long days and, and we're already off to the races doing our best to, to expedite this. And yes, there's an urgency involved. The only thing I can say is it is as tiresome as it is rewarding and exciting, um, not to diminish obviously, you know, how important a situation this is and the suffering that, that is being caused by COVID-19. But, you know, as a scientist, we, it's, it's a calling for us that, you know, it's, it's an important situation. It's an important and very rewarding uh, situation for us to be able to rise up and to do something about this and, and to be able to help as best we can. Well, Dr. Slavjo, I wanna thank you for making time for us. And uh, we hope to be talking to you uh, in the next coming weeks or months as you, we hope, get closer to a resolution of uh, what's going on and what you're uh, embarking on, which could be very historic. Great. But thanks so much for having me. It's, it's been a great pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.